you have an interest in horses and love learning more about horses, the horse industry, teaching, or even managing your own horse business, then you're in the right place. We would love you to join us on our mission, which is to improve the lives of horses around the world through the education of riders, handlers, and trainers. So get comfortable, listen in, and enjoy. Today I'd like to introduce you to Terry Cowan, who's an absolute legend, has been showing around the eastern side of Australia for 42 years with Vince Corby on the Woodhurst show team. Now, I'm sure that Terry's won countless championships, ribbons, won lots of trophies on those that show circuit. He used to start off through Canberra, Sydney, Brisbane and Melbourne Royal shows, as well as competing through lots of shows in Queensland in New South Wales. So hi, Terry. How are you today? I'm good, Gladness. Thank you. And you? Wonderful. Wonderful. Now, Terry, I've heard a rumour that there was a photo of you still in nappies screaming blue murder because you wouldn't get off a horse and that was a photo of you. So you've been riding for as long as you can remember. Yes, for as long as I can remember. That was when I apparently was before I could walk, I was on the pummel in front of my father. My mother's trying to get me down and I would not get down. <laughs> okay, that's a great story. Now, Terry, your favourite or, or or just a saying, you know, a quote that you'd like me to start off with? Right, uh, now let's start with perfect practice makes perfect. Not practice makes perfect, perfect practice makes perfect. And there is a difference too. If you can tell me when you started that, when you first thought about it and how it's made a difference to you. Well, when I was young, everybody just rode. You know, we didn't think a lot about how we rode. We just rode. Yes. And then when I got started training horses with Vince and started to ride with Vince, mm -hmm. well, like, as you said earlier, 42 years ago, then you had to start to think because we'd come in and he would say to you, oh, now give me a pricey on each horse that you rode. Mm -hmm. And then it would go from there, you see. Mm -hmm. Now, in all those years, and I'm sure 42 years and you had a stable full of horses, not just one or two, but there was always a stable full of horses. Is there a horse that you think, wow, this is one that's a bit of a standout that you'll, that's always going to be? Yes, there was one. There was a thoroughbred horse called Chinook, a chestnut horse that we bought from a racehorse trainer in Tamworth. Mm-hmm. And I went out to work him one day, went to run him around on the lunge first to hop on because I didn't know anything about him. And I came back in and I said, wow, you should see what I've just found out here. Mm. And he turned out a little superstar. That's great. Yep. All right. Now, you know, I know Vince has been very influential in your life, but another person, trainer, someone that's... Um... Yes. Yep. A lady called Sue Clanny from Shepparton in Victoria. Mm -hmm. She was a great mentor for me. Okay, in what way? When did you first meet her? Oh, gee whiz. Um, I would have met her probably 30, 35 years ago. Mm -hmm. And she helped me with the philosophy of riding and training and learning. She mm -hmm. helped me with position because I have a long back, so my long back took a lot of mastering. Mm -hmm. And she also taught me that tomorrow is another day the sun will come up. It's not as bad as you think it is. Just go to bed, get up and do it again in the morning. Okay. Is there any particular time when you when she, he, she first said that or any time when you thought, oh, you're kidding, not this again, and but it yeah, turned out I, to be I'd okay? Have, when I'd have to when I'd be working with a difficult horse with Vince mm. and Vince would be short on patience because at that stage he'd hurt his back, he couldn't ride anymore. Mm -hmm. So he would be thinking to himself, God, just get off and let me on, would you? But he couldn't get off. <laughs> Okay. All right. Just going on, tell me a little bit about the shows, what life was like, you know, because people dream of going on a show circuit and just going from show to show to show. But tell me the reality, what it was like, how well organised you had to be, you know, just on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, if we left from Maitland in New South Wales, which is near Newcastle, yes, and we went out into the western districts of New South Wales in the May, what they call their May run, we would have to take special, war, specially warmer rugs for those horses in May. Mm -hmm. So we'd have rugs for horses to go away in May, horses to go away with in August and September, and then different rugs again to come to Queensland. <laughs> and you'd have to plan where you were going to go. You'd have to be able to have somebody stay behind with the horses that didn't go to the show that day. Mm -hmm. And you just had to be on the job all the time. It was a full commitment. You either committed fully yep. or you just didn't do it. 
Okay. Okay. So you committed fully and you had to be organized. You can't, yes. You can't do it half-hearted and do a good job. And do a good job. You just couldn't because we would be carting like two and three truckloads of horses to a different show today then another two or three truckloads of horses tomorrow to another show. Yep. Yep. You had to be on the job all the time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, then. What in all that time, and it may not have even been at a show, but what was your proudest moment? Oh, gee whiz. That's too many, oh, isn't it? <laughs> That's all right. Tell me about one. One. Right, then. One was a horse. This is not so many years ago at Sydney Show where we showed a harness horse and he brought tears to people's eyes the way we were able to get him to step that day with so much straightness and rhythm and impulsion and engagement and all those terms, mm, mm. and he just floated across the show ring. That was just spectacular to watch. I can still see him. Mm, mm. All right. Now, if you were looking for a horse, looking for a show horse, for someone who doesn't know, who just says, look, I'd like you to look for a show horse, and there's a group of horses, what makes a standout horse? In a your horse opinion. stands up and has a quality called, or has a presence called quality. Mm-hmm. He might be the best conformed, but he has to stand up and say, hey, look at me in this group of horses, aren't I the best? Okay. Yep. I can imagine that, looking at a group of horses, and yes, there, there usually is one that's a bit of a standout or... Standout, um, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As I said, it doesn't have to be, very, doesn't have to be perfectly conformed, mm. but it does have to stand out and say, have this presence, this quirkiness, to say, now look at me, aren't I good? Mm. Mm. All right. Now, training tips. Have you got a training tip for training horses and a training tip for training riders? For training horses, the training tip would be you have to have a clear uh, clear picture in your own mind of what you're going to ask the horse to do. Mm-hmm. And then to train the rider, the rider then has to have a clear picture in their mind of what they're trying to achieve. Okay. Yep. So using a bit of imagery and visualisation yes, to you could work use towards a camera, use video camera a fair bit and just watching other horses and watching other riders Yep. and then getting the feel of it yourself because a lot of people try to achieve something but they're not quite sure whether they've got the right feeling or the wrong feeling. Mm-hmm. So somebody on the ground just to say, yep, that's what you're after. No, 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 that's terrible. Okay. Yeah, and sometimes it's those people saying that's terrible, that that are being honest with you that can then give you a bit more instruction. It's no good people just telling you how wonderful you are all the time. No, 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 you can't do that at all because that's unfair to everybody. Mm. And if you're, somebody is paying you, that's yes. taking money for the false pretenses. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They have to be honest. If they don't like it, well, that's too bad. But you don't have to be brutal, but you do yep. have to be honest. Yep. What do you think, this is showing, what do you think is a common horse problem? And a common, yeah, talk, talk to me about a common horse problem that can be corrected, you know, more of a training problem or a presentation, something that can be corrected that people listening will learn from and it will help them. You see lots of crooked horses in the show ring. Mm-hmm. Uh, crooked horses then go long, short, long, short, or one long, one short, one up, one down. Yep. And then they don't go regular and they don't go in an even rhythm. And then they get a reputation for being unsound. When they're not unsound, they're just crooked. Uh-huh, uh-huh. All right. And then a rider tip. Yes, the same thing. If you want a horse to have presence mm-hmm. and quality and show itself, the rider also has to have presence and quality and show themselves. So you have to sit up and you have to be proud. And you have to carry your chin. And even though it might not, it might not be going so very well underneath you, you don't let anybody else see that. Everybody else thinks it's going wonderfully. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, what about a book for our listeners today, Terry? Have you got a book that you'd like to recommend? No, I don't have one. It's Vince was going to do one of them. As a matter of fact, he'd started on that before he died. But, no, I couldn't give you one, to tell you the truth. I, I think the amount of horses that you've sort of been working and showing and everything else, it's probably that you've been – too busy, you're just always out there doing the practical yeah, stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, what does the future hold for you now? What do you plan to do now and focus on? Well, now I've closed down the training side of the business that we have here or oh, had here. Yep. And I'll go on now with the teaching. Yes. And helping people, just teaching and helping people now. 
Okay. Because I've been very, very fortunate to be able to do what I've wanted to do, what I've loved to do all my life. Mm-hmm. Nobody said you can't do this and you can't do that because the way I went and I just did it. Yep, yep. And now I'm in a position where I can offer some help and give some back to people now if they wish. Good, good. And so if people do want to contact you for lessons, what's the best way to contact you? I phone would be the best way. Okay, so if you can say your phone number, but it will be on the show notes page as well. But if you can put it down, yep. 0427 yes. 587 305. Okay, so you're located in Caboolture in Queensland. Do you travel at all? Yes. As a matter of fact, tomorrow afternoon I fly to Armadale in New South Wales for the weekend. Okay. Do a shiver there. Yep. Uh Yes, it will be a bit cool, won't it? So if people want to contact you to come and do a clinic, that'll be good. And if they just want to contact you about lessons to come over, then um, they'll be able to contact you as well. All right, look, it's been great talking to you, Terry. And I'm sure you've lived, you know, just doing those shows. I didn't realise how long, actually, that for 42 years. It seems like forever, you know, that you'd been doing them. But that's just amazing. And I'm sure that a lot of people will know you and Vince and will have seen you on those shows and we'll, you know, just be looking forward to um, hearing from you some more. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Brenda. Thanks, Terry. Bye-bye. Bye now. Remember that our comments and instructions are general in nature and do not take into consideration your individual horses or your individual ability and circumstances. If you enjoyed this podcast, then please leave your comment below 